Folks, how are we doing? Today we're going to give you a bit of a pallet fork guide. So how to select the right set of pallet forks for your tractor. You know, little subcompacts, a compact, a large frame utility, a skid steer, whatever it is. Different options, different quick attach types, fork tine lengths, weight capacities, all that good stuff. So stick around. John Deere Quick Attach just has two of these pins, one on each side down in the corners. Sometimes you don't have much weight or when they're brand new, they have a little bit of extra paint build up. They might not seat the whole way through. Normally just a swift kick, we'll seat it on there. And once you take a bucket or forks or a push or anything on and off, you're gonna wear all the paint off around here. Those tolerances are pretty tight. So um, once you wear it in, it's normally not an issue at all. Okay, so now we're gonna put the tines on the frame itself and you'll notice along the bottom rail, a small little cutout and that's to allow you to actually get the tine onto the frame and then you're gonna slide it to the left or to the right. Okay, I'm gonna give this a shot, see if I can actually use the tractor, lower it down to the right angle and uh, pick right up underneath here so I don't have to lift it up. Of course I could, these are the ultralight forks so they're not all that heavy, but if you do have a larger set like a standard duty or one of the 4,200, 5,500 pound sets, well, those are really heavy tines. So anyway, let's see if this works. So I just missed that center slot, but you can see the top rail's on here. So right now it's not fully seated. I'm gonna give it a quick shift. And now it's on. We do have our pin that's in the unlock position. So that's gonna allow it to slide all the way over. We'll just go wherever we want, right about here. And you can kind of shift it around. And you're gonna have a little bit of wiggle room, all right? A little bit of wiggle room is gonna be typical for all of these. This is steel on steel. So you have to have some place so that you can freely slide it. Otherwise you would bind them up all the time. You'd never move them, you'd, you'd just hate using them. So this is just fine to have a little play. All right, so it's as easy as that. You're gonna have a quick attach for the John Deere or the skid steer, depending on your tractor setup. We'll get more on that later, but we're gonna line them up now, let you see them all side by side and give you that comparison. All right, so we got them all lined up in no particular order. Uh, I got the hydraulic forks. These are 5,500 pound frames, skid steer, quick attach. You know, you need a hydraulic connection. Ultralight, these are the really popular ones for the subcompacts. Uh, these are John Deere quick attach. 2,000 pound forks there on the big Kubota. And then we have our 4,200 pound with a full brick guard forks on the 2025. Now I gotta point out, those forks are too big for that 2025, all right? That normally goes on uh, my 4720 that I have and previously the 4066R, but I don't have that tractor out here right now, so it's just holding forks so you can see what they are. And you're gonna notice these hydraulics aren't hooked up right now. I'm having a heck of a 24 hour period right now. I, um, well, I'll show you the back of my enclosed trailer. I smashed in uh, the top of that. That was fantastic. I forgot to put a roll bar down, so feeling pretty good about that. Um, then we have a drone that's about 50 foot up in the trees that we got stuck there earlier today. And the heat has expanded the fluid inside uh, of the hydraulics here, and we can't get the quick couplers on the hydraulics to show you how these will go in and out hydraulically. So this is the second time this has happened to me this spring. There's just too much pressure in this side. When these sit out in the sun, it starts to warm up. Everything expands in here. There's just too much pressure build up and you could bleed these off, but that's just, you know, that's just annoying. What I need to do is stop procrastinating and get my HEC, the hose end chambers hooked up on here. That's exactly what they're for, is to put on here when you're not using them, when they're gonna be sitting outside, having the heat hit them, have them warm up and swell, that fluid can expand into the chamber and then re go back right into it. If it's gonna cool down, it can easily come off. You need to hook it up. It prevents these problems from happening because if I really had to use these right now, I would be up a creek, basically. So 
Check out the hose end chamber. They're relatively inexpensive. You can save 5% using code GWT. So anyway, we're gonna keep playing with this, see if we can get that hooked up. I do have a set of fork extensions that are super handy as well. I'm gonna show you what those are later on. They can go on pretty much any forks that are out here, but they'll extend out if you need something really lightweight, but just a really long reach. You can get like a six foot extension on those. They're pretty cool. So let's start with weight classes on all these and identify what those are. So we're gonna have 900 pound on these guys, 2,000 pound on the Kubota, 4,200 way over there on the end, and then 5,500. Now that pound rating is gonna be at a load center or a load point that on um, the little guys here is 21 inches out from the frame. So if you measure 21 inches out this way, that's where that 900 pound capacity comes into play. On all the bigger ones, I believe it's gonna be 24 inches a little bit further out because more often you're gonna be at 48 or 60 inch tines on those. And all these forks are, are overbuilt, all right? I think it was like three years ago, I put a set of these little guys on my 4066 that I had back in the day and lifted up a huge stack of weight, well over 2,000 pounds of them. These things, I, I used them for like a month on that tractor. They held up just fine. So you guys that ask questions like on your two series tractors, like that 2025R or the 2032, 2038, your Kubota um, LX3310, all that, those kind of tractors that are really just one step above a subcompact, they're gonna work really well on there. So why I recommend these lightweight, these little guys, for those tractors like the subcompacts and the next size up is because of the physical weight of the entire assembly. This is gonna weigh about 190, 200 pounds right in that ballpark. The next step up is the standard duty forks. Those weigh 130 pounds more than what these guys lift. So that's 130 pounds of just lifting up the forks that your loader has to do. That's taking away from whatever you wanna put on the forks, whatever you wanna put on a pallet or a log or something else that you wanna lift. So that's a lot of weight that's eaten up for a little loader like this. So really weight is a concern on smaller tractors with limited capacity. Once you have a significant loader capacity, weight's really not a concern with the forks. You're more concerned about making sure the frame is built rugged and robust and not gonna fail on you. And so on that note, you're gonna see that all of these forks are HLA forks, which is up in Ontario. I've been selling their equipment for a long time. Their snow pushers are super popular. You guys watching, if you own HLA products, I know a lot of you do, leave a comment down below and let those other folks watching know just how high quality these products are. One big decision you need to make is if you need a JDQA or an SSQA, all right? John Deere Quick Attach for John Deere's, Skid Steer Quick Attach for Kubotas, for Mahindras, for Coyotes, for LS, for New Holland pretty much everything else that's out there. But that's not always standard. Sometimes you do have a pinned on bucket or a goofy type of quick attach, and we can order forks to fit those kinds of setups, but they are typically gonna be an upcharge because it's kind of a custom job for HLA to do, and typically gonna be a longer lead time as well. All right, something else we should discuss before we go any further is safety, all right? So that's ballast weight, so let's have Chris back up just a touch and tell you more about it. So we spend a lot of time talking about safety on this channel, and it's because we have a lot of new tractor owners joining the group all the time. So it's worth mentioning again that you wanna have a lot of counterweight on the backside of your tractor anytime you're using that front end loader. Here you see we have what's called our hitch hang so if you have a quick hitch like the Spico, you can put these weight brackets on the side, still leave your three-point hitch open to hook up an attachment if you want to, or if you need additional ballast weight besides, say, the Versa bracket and suitcase weights or a ballast box or another attachment. So between these six weights and the hitch hangers, you can get up to another 450 pounds of ballast weight if you need it. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. Okay, so you may think pallet forks are only good for picking up pallets, but I wrote down all sorts of stuff here. And if I miss something, make sure you let us know. But pallet forks are great for uh, moving logs, brush piles, stacks of anything you have, patio furniture, uh, used as a hanging mechanism for butchering deer or seeing under a mower deck, moving hay bales, uh, supporting posts if you're trying to put posts in the ground or uh, you know fence posts or a flagpole, uh, hauling posts if you need to move them around, large boulders, truck caps, taking them off of the back of your truck, moving heavy appliances. The list just goes on and on. There's all sorts of uses. Anytime you wanna have a couple of a long fingers out there to grab something, you can use a set of pallet forks. So another decision you have to make is gonna be the right tine length for you, all right? And so I think there's too many choices out there personally. It's, it's just a lot of inventory to carry. You know, these six inch increments don't make a whole lot of difference. I, I sometimes feel like I just need to carry one size for each frame and call it good. But we have 42 inch forks on the little guys right now. You can get 36, 42s, 48s. I don't carry the 48s at all. I probably just need to 
carry 36 or 42. You don't want the extra length. The further out you go with any forks, the less lift capacity you have. So you do want to keep things closer to the tractor. I wouldn't lose sleep over 36 or 42. Now you have the same choices, 36, 42, 48 on the 2,000 pound frame. I typically don't stock the 36s on here, either the 42s or the 48s. Once you get up to the 4,200 pound and the 5,500 pound and so on, it's pretty much 48, 54, 60, and you can even get into 72 inch tines. Okay, so again, typically you wanna always keep your load as close to the frame and the, and the base of the, of the forks as possible. The further out you go, the less weight you can lift. Also, if you have longer tines, those are gonna, of course, weigh more than shorter tines too, so there's that consideration as well a bigger concern for smaller tractors and larger ones. But if you're tight on storage space, then of course, a shorter fork may work to your advantage. So you'll notice there's a different look to these forks, uh, probably more from your angle than from mine. So the shortest back is gonna be on the light guys here. And so of course you're saving weight by not having a big tall back. It doesn't mean there's no back, right? You can still see you have a good, what, 18, 20 inches, something like that uh, right here to kind of back against. So it'd be really challenging for something to fall back over this way. I've never had that issue at all. Now, once you get up to the 2000 pound forks, you're gonna see there's an even taller back. So again, those uh, lighter duty ones come up to about right here. You have an extra, I don't know, 10, 12 inches, something like that. That's adding more weight, but giving you a little bit more protection as well. Now, these are the 4,200 pound forks. I want to reiterate, they are way too big for this tractor. We're just showing them on here just so you can see what they're all about. These are for a large compact or even a, a utility tractor as well. These are shown with this optional full brick guard. That's what this kind of uh, squared checkered thing is called. Up here, you can get it with or without. It's an extra cost to get it with. Uh, these are 60 inch tines that we have on here too. So that's an option as well, but a very strong, very rugged, beefy um, set of pallet forks. That's never gonna fail you. And here's a quick look at the 5,500 pound set. This is without that full brick guard on there. So the 5,500 and 4,200 are pretty similar. If you don't wanna get that full brick guard, a good look at it here. Now, one thing you're not gonna see in this video are clamp-on forks for your bucket, and I am just not a big fan of those. We, we can sell them, but I just choose not to. We get a lot of folks that have had a set of those forks and just are sick and tired of them and end up getting a regular set of forks like what you see here. But clamp-on forks, yes, they are a lot cheaper, all right? And they're gonna clamp onto your bucket to the bottom edge of your bucket. And so they can oftentimes become loose and wiggly and wobbly. Some of them do have a, a cross brace section as well, which can, can help, but it's also gonna push your load point even further out because they're, they're clamping onto the front edge, that leading edge on your bucket. So it's pushing that point way out there. There's a likelihood of potentially damaging your bucket or bending the bottom rail of it as well. Pallet forks, I'm telling you, they're one of the handiest attachments that you can get for your tractor. We sell them all the time and it's just amazing. We talked about the uses for them, but you're constantly finding ways to use pallet forks, even putting your attachments on individual pallets, and then you can shuffle them around and organize as needed. It's just such a handy attachment to have. All right, so these are the fork extensions I was talking about, and we use these things all the time. And so, uh, easy to put on, uh, they're pretty lightweight, but they're gonna give you a lot of extra length if you need it in a pinch, and you can take them right back off, store them pretty easy too, but we got these from palletforks.com, so I'll post a link to where you can get them through there. But they're super easy to put on. You can see that, that steel loop that's there. You just kind of tuck that underneath, so it's kind of around the whole time. Slide it back, and you might have a little play, right? You can use them with wider uh, forks as well, but these come in super handy. They're pretty cheap. I'm sure they've gone up in price because everything does since uh, since we bought them. But overall, if you're kind of kicking yourself because you wish you would have got longer tines uh, originally up front from wherever you got your forks, this could be a, a cheaper way to get a longer set when you need them in a pinch. All right, so that's a lot of information to throw at you there. Hopefully you found that helpful. Again, for me, I, I wouldn't lose a whole lot of sleep about the, the tine length. JDQA is for John Deere Quick Attach, SSQA for Skid Steer Quick Attach. You know, you can even use these 2,000 pound rated forks on a Kubota tractor like this one right here. You could go up to the 4,200 pound. You're not gonna see, you're not gonna realize that benefit for the most part though. But if you just really kind of, if you're rough on things, maybe you wanna step it up one notch and go to the 4,200 pounds. Otherwise, this set right here is our standard duty set that we sell for anything like your, your John Deere 3E tractors, the 3R, the 4 series, uh, and then again to the 5 series as well. On your Kubotas, it's gonna be like uh, the standard L series, the Grand L series, and then uh, the M series like what you see here. And again, the ultralights, these are where it's at for you small tractor owners, and we sell an absolute boatload of these forks, ship them all across the country. 
The one thing we get asked a decent amount is, can you get them with a receiver that's that's built in you, that's welded in here somewhere, and HLA does not offer that right now. Now, I prefer to hook up trailers to the backside of my tractor, so if you're looking at the ballast weight, we talked about the safety, our Versa bracket has a built-in two-inch receiver, okay? So the Versa bracket is versatile, okay? It holds suitcase weights for your ballast weight. It's got chain grab hooks on there. It's got a chainsaw holder. It's got the two-inch receiver. It's quick hitch compatible or hook up right to your three-point hitch. So make sure you're setting yourself up right out of the gate. Alrighty, folks, that's gonna wrap it for us today. Hopefully you found this guide helpful. If you are looking for a set of forks, maybe some ballast weight, Anything else for your tractor, we're happy to help. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. If you enjoyed today's video, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.